There was so much to see just at the Cloud Forest Dome at Gardens by the Bay in Singapore that we had to turn this tour into a five-part series. In this final episode, we'll complete our tour with Chad Davis through the cavernous secret garden, which features more than 7,000 plants, including 135 species and hybrids. Welcome to the secret garden. This is one of my favorite spots. Earlier when we walked over that bridge, uh, we were just, just here ahead of us. And this is one of my favorite views of the garden. Looking here from inside of the dark cave and the way the light dances across the rocks. We've got some nice begonias down here. We've got a miniature orchid display. A chance to see some of the different tree ferns and uh, see the garden in a different light. You know, mad props to the architects on how to kind of like imagine how this all comes together at every different angle, you know? Yep, I'm I'm impressed every day. These lights we had custom made for us, these lights turn into grow lights at night. They have the full spectrum for plants from 2 a.m. until 7 a.m. They're on. There's not enough light for Mastivalios to flower in here. Um, But with those lights and the additional supplement, they are. Keeps things alive. See that begonia is really hogging that one. Uh Oh, yes. I think you're going to have to cut him down a little bit. (laughs) It's eating all the light. Yeah. These are just. Uh-huh. So sizable. I actually just got one of these guys for um, my terrarium. You must have some pretty big terrariums. I've got to see your place. Yeah. Seeing these makes me a little bit worried because I'm like, it's not going to fit in my terrarium. <laughs> it's going to outgrow your terrarium. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see if there's any flowers underneath here. These guys just came in. Is there a podophyllum? Nope, no flowers yet, but these guys flower like a ruscus. They flower just down here on the bottom. They look like a begonia leaf. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, this is a bipinifidum. I think the begonia, this one with the lacy leaves. It's a nice one. So earlier we, were, we mentioned the Wallamai pine. Oh yeah. We've got our little Wallamai here. This guy's got a great story. It's a plant that was discovered in the 1990s and until then they only knew it from the fossil record. Mm. Um, its closest relatives are only 20,000 year old fossils mm. are its closest relatives. Um, and they found it in the 1990s in the Blue Mountains outside of uh, Sydney in Australia. And um, we're happy to have them here. This guy came to Singapore in 2009 for the Singapore Garden Festival, and it's bounced around from the uh, various nurseries until we got to be, to be open here. It's pretty happy. It's doing pretty well. Is this another ant plant, or what is this? Um, it's a melastome. Oh, it's a melastoma. Macy. Yep. Okay. Yep, melastome Macy. Yeah. Ooh, a Hoffmania. It's in the Rubiaceae. That's nice. Check out the texture of this guy. Whoa. So it's a Gesneriad, unnamed, but pretty cool. So this is a Solanacea, isn't it? Pretty sure this is a Solanacea. Solanacea, all right. Yeah. It's got a great foliage. Yeah. Nice and black and dark. Yeah. These blends are, well with these guys. These things are uh, spider mite heaven, but I don't think you get as many spider mites here in Singapore as we do in the Northeast. <laughs> uh, we get our share. Oh, these are the, the brown spider wart, I think. Uh, these are very easy to grow. Excellent house plant right here. Here's some more of our podophyllums. Any flowers? Oh, yeah, here, here's some, some fruits. Got some fruits, but no yeah. flowers today. Yeah, yeah these are um, native to the Northeast. May apples. Yep. Yeah. Yep, understory in the forest. Yeah, you could harvest them. What is this? This looks like another Hoffmania, but it's not, is it? Um, you've got a... Uh, that flower bud down below, does that give you any clues? No, it doesn't. Because I've never seen my Hoffmania flower, unfortunately. <laughs> this looks like a Paraceae. Paraceae. I feel so bad. No, it's okay. You can't, you can't know them all. I don't know them all. I'm just guessing. I'm throwing it out there and I'm hoping one of them is, uh, is true. So here's some of these peperomias. Yep, some peperomias and this is our miniature orchid plot. Um, you may know j orchids. Yes, I do. We bought uh, quite a number of their collection when they closed down. Uh, Our nursery, we house a lot of their miniature collections, yeah. and we bring them out here and rotate them through this display. Uh, this one has been going here for um, maybe about 16 or 18 months, and we work well with our research department who manage those greenhouses, and we're always 
bringing new things out. We've got the magnifying lenses here, so you can see some of these little guys a little bit closer. Cool. The kids like it. Yeah. It's hard to keep the fingerprints off the glass, oh, though. Yeah. Strange oh, yeah, pepperoni again. Pepperoni right there. Yep, it's cool to see the difference right next to each other. Yeah, it really is. Oh, is this Biofitum? Yep, absolutely. The sensitive one. Yeah. Does he curl up for you? No. Maybe a little oversensitized. Oh, yeah. oh, he's starting to curl. Yeah, a little bit. Yep. Biofit, Biofitum, Biofitum sensitivum. These, uh, these are larger than what I've, um, I'm used to. Very easily grown by seed, though. Is this an, another melastome? No, this is a pilea. Yep, this is your. This one has a uh, little yep. bit more urticaceous uh, look to it. Yep, I believe you're right. And then this, this is, is a peperomia. Maybe that's a Metallica. Not sure. Again, I, it throws me off a little bit because the leaves are so much larger here. <laughs> yes. Seeing them here, yeah, it's even strange with the cactus and succulents. They don't yeah. look exactly yeah. the, uh, the same when they're grown here either. <laughs> oh, there's so much to look at. Yep, so here you can see our irrigation lines. Mm -hmm. So here it's a little bit uh, a little bit dark so you don't see the moss coming in as much, but it gives you a chance to see how we're growing things. Um, this is a mix of concrete peat and clay that's been uh, applied on here. Every 12 or 14 inches, there's an irrigation line. Every 12 or 14 inches, there's an emitter. And this whole structure stays nice and moist. And then there are 16 pairs of ties per square meter. Um, and this is how we tie the plants on. And the tighter we get them to the wall, the faster they'll attach themselves yeah. and start growing on. And that concrete peat and clay, was that something that was already a known product you, that you're using or did you have to experiment with that a little bit? So this came from a, uh, a Singaporean uh, landscape contractor who does a lot of green walls. Mm -hmm. um, he passed away about a year ago, mm -hmm. uh, but this was his idea mm -hmm. and he uh, brought it to National Parks Board and they did some trials. Um, and it became what we use for the whole mountain. Wow, well his legacy lives on then, how about yep, that? It's working really well for us so far. Yeah. I think the, uh, uh, the adding the texture to it and the yeah. bumps um, making it rough yeah. is really what makes it successful. And that's the bridge that we walked across yeah. earlier. <clears throat> and then you've got some great little pocket views from these little windows. That's so cool. And you actually have things growing in the windows too. Yep. Some pepperoni and some pilea moss that I'll never be able to identify. <laughs> it was a different, that was a different era. <laughs> Amazing. Oh God, philodendron rugosum. Yep. Look at this one. Pigskin philodendron, I love the texture of this. Some really great varieties. I'm like salivating and then I'm also <laughs> in, so inquisitive because I don't know it, all, uh. of the, all of these species, you know? Yeah, so a lot of these we bought um, just as unknown collections, mm -hmm. just where we could find them, pieces here and there. Mm -hmm. um, so um, there's a lot of, a lot of oddball things that are around here. Is this a fibrosum? I'm not sure. Again, you're, yeah. you know better than me. I know. Yeah, these All are these so hard to grow so indoors. I find the ones with the um, very fuzzy stems are the most difficult to actually right. grow. Right. I've also tried to grow this one. It's very difficult challenging but you know what I'd, I'd like to try you know you give it a shot um, you learn more from failure than you do from success you really do. you really do and sometimes it takes a little while just to get it right Hoffmania I couldn't get it right for the first two times then after a while I got it right so see this one this one this is probably how you'd have to grow this one in, indoors yeah so this is just really remarkable I mean I I so appreciate you taking the time to give us a little bit more of an in-depth tour here because there's so much to take in. There's so much that it's, it's easy to gloss everything over, but to dive a little bit deeper and see what you're growing and how this is maintained, it's just such a special moment. So thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Yeah, really thank you very much, it. Summer. Thank you. This may have been a five-part series touring the Cloud Forest Dome at Gardens by the Bay, but I feel as if we only scratched the surface. Videos like this get made through the help of supporters like you. So if you dug the tour, then support the channel by hitting the subscribe button and tell me what you liked the most about the field trip in the comments below. And remember, you could follow along on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com, my daily journey on Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn, and if you're keen on increasing your indoor gardening IQ, then you may want to check out the recently released Houseplant Masterclass. 
the first comprehensive online course on houseplant cultivation, care, and maintenance at houseplantmasterclass.com.